Before I explain on the presentation, I'm going to explain to you an example on how to select the reinforcement details from SMACNA itself by going through it and a reading guide summary for these tables because SMACNA have so many tables which can confuse anyone at the beginning. For example, in this here on page 34, the reading guide summary gives you an example duct of 54 inch by 18 inch duct with a 5 feet joint spacing. Now this example you need to specify if the duct requires reinforcement or no on both sides, the 54 inch and the 18 inch. So let's explore it for each side of the duct. This is table number one. Considering that my duct is operating at one inch static pressure classification. I have table 1.4, which is for the rectangular duct reinforcement. This table can be read as follows. The first column representing the duct dimensions. And on the top left of the screen, you can see the pressure classification for which duct table you will go through. And on the second column, this is the gauge of the duct required in case of there is no reinforcement required. If you don't require reinforcement, you can use the duct gauges, which will give you the thickness, the sheet metal thickness from these values on, on the second column. However, if you are obligated or if you are required to use reinforcement, you can go through the details given by columns 3 to 10. You can note here that the values in the circles denotes the column number. So columns 3 to 10 will give you the reinforcement code for duct gauge based on the reinforcement spacing options obtained from here. So we are using the reinforcement option of 5 feet. So I'm going to go as this column my entry point and I'm going to use the duct dimension as my row point and I'm going to cross the column with the row to obtain the value required. For example, for the 18 inch duct which represents the height of the duct, it's lay it's laid between 17 and 18 inch. I can see that no reinforcement is required if I use gauge 22. So I'm going to consider gauge 22 for my duct height. As we can see, it's mentioned here. On the 18 inch side, flat slips or drives qualify bare column two. Bare column two means that there is no reinforcement required in this case. So for the 18 inch, I'm going to use 22 gauge duct without the need for reinforcement. However, for the second dimension, which is the width or the 54 inch duct, which lays in between here, 49 to, 45, to 54. In this case, you can see the slot here. There is no value for the pressure gauge or the duct sheet metal thickness. It's mentioned not designed. This means that you have to install reinforcement. So I will go to intersect this row the column of the five feet spacing of the joint I can see this will give me the value of F22. F22 denotes that you need to install uh, a duct gauge of 22 based on selecting the F type of the reinforcement. As we can see if we zoom out from here you can see and further tables related to the joints and the reinforcement you can see the minimum rigidity class this is referred to by the letters from A to L you will choose F this will give you the dimension details of the reinforcement in here. It will give you EI and it will give you the height by the thickness mentioned in here. And here it's mentioned use G. So I will go to G. It will give you the height by the thickness. The height is 1 by 5 by 8 and the gauge will be 18 gauge. So in this case, in the small duct, I can use gauge 22 without any sheet metal thickness reinforcement required however in the big duct I'm going to use F22 F22 refers that you are going to use gauge 22 for the reinforcement and you are going to use F for the minimum rigidity class of this reinforcement in here you have two options either to use intermediate reinforcement as referred to the L angle here or to use the transfer joint as the reinforcement by using this in here if you are going to use the intermediate reinforcement, you will go to the rigidity class or the reinforcement class F. This will give you the details of the reinforcement in here highlighted. Or if you are going to use the transfer joint as the reinforcement, it will give you, based on the rigidity class of F, the full details of the reinforcement thickness and gauge required. 
I hope this example is cleared the idea now for reinforcement duct. Let's recap. First, you need to know the pressure classification. This is the entry point. It will help you to select which table of these tables. And then the second item, you will go with the duct dimension to check for each dimension of the duct which pressure gauge is required for our previous example, the 54 by 18 inch. In 18 inch, you will go to the second column directly. You can see that no reinforcement is required at gauge 22. So you can select the duct sheet metal thickness to be gauge 22, or you can select reinforcement options from here. The second dimension, which is a 54, there is no uh, duct uh, gauge uh, given in case of no reinforcement. So it's only given in the reinforcement case. So you need to follow the reinforcement of the rigidity class F or the reinforcement class F and use gauge 22. So I will go to two options, either to use an intermediate reinforcement, which is L angle, but in between the two joints, or to use the joint, the transfer joint itself as a reinforcement. In, this in both cases, you have the rigidity or the reinforcement class to get the dimension details of the reinforcement or the transfer joint. You need also to know that the reinforcement option gives you an excellent opportunity to reduce the duct sheet metal thickness. This can have two main benefits. Benefit number one, in case, let's say, for example, if you procured the duct to site and the duct is in a gauge different than the duct you need. In my case, for example, I'm going to show you on this. For example, if I need a duct gauge 18 and I found that the duct gauge came to me as duct gauge 20. You have to know the duct gauge, the more the number increase, the less and the lower the sheet metal thickness of the duct. So the gauge 20 is less in the thickness than gauge 18. So I have a problem on site and I have a duct gauge with lower thickness than the thickness specified by the uh, specification of the project. So what to do in this case? In this case, you can add the reinforcement and it will solve the problem directly and it will save you a lot of money and a lot of trouble. The second option is you can intentionally bring less thickness duct into site, but you have to put reinforcement as required by SMACNA tables for the rectangular duct reinforcement. This will also save you a great deal of money and time. And also there is a lot of waste in duct fabrication process. You can use the reinforcement options to form the reinforcement angles accordingly following the given specification of the reinforcement details as per SMACNA. That's why the reinforcement option is not so bad after all, and it can save you a great deal of money. For example, in my case, I have the duct 24 inch, and this duct means that if at one inch pressure static uh, classification, no reinforcement option is given at duct gauge 18. However, the duct gauge found on site is duct gauge 24. So what can I do? I can use the reinforcement option here. This will give me the option to use reinforcement type C, or the reinforcement classification C or to use a transfer joint based on minimum rigidity class C given that the sheet metal thickness should be 24 gauge and now problem solved without doing any mistakes or repeating or returning back the material or avoiding any unnecessary embarrassment. I hope this example cleared it. Let's go now back to the presentation to show it on a small example.